if you've been living under a rock, then perhaps you've overlooked the fact that today is the day, the most important day of the college football season. It's Alabama, it's LSU, game day is there because, duh. The playoff implications are huge, and that's not just me getting cute with words. According to the All-State Playoff Predictor, the winner of this game is a virtual lock. While the loser gets a spot in, yeah, you're still in the mix. Something to keep in mind, Caesar says Bama is a six-point favorite. Also, the Tide have not lost a game at home since 2015. Tua, by the way, is technically a game-time decision, though the prevailing wisdom here and the prevailing thought is that he's going to play in this game. Good morning, sir. David Pollack joining us this morning. The, the Tide is, is going to need to generate a, a whole lot of offense here because this isn't your daddy's Bama defense, and this isn't your daddy's LSU offense. So where are the holes in the Bama defense that could potentially show up against Joe Burrow and company? Nicole, they have a lot of strengths on this Alabama defense. They got two lockdown corners. They got guys like Terrell Lewis that we're going to talk about in a minute. They got Anthony Jennings. But I say what, the guys in the middle, Harris and Lee, are both freshmen. They just haven't played a lot of football. And now, go against Joe Burrow in this RPO game, they, they trick you with your eyes. This is run. They're blocking run. They throw pass behind and attack the middle of the field. This is what Joe Burrow and LSU has been best at, attacking the middle of the field at a high rate consistently. 84% over the middle of the field is absurd. Alabama's youth is in the middle of the field. Be very interesting to watch that chess match. Sir, did you just tease us in the middle of an answer? Because I bit. think you did. It is time <laughs> for your dude. Quick refresher here. What is a dude and who is it this week? A dude is just a guy that you watch on tape and you go, man, that dude is a dude. It just makes sense, Nicole, okay? I mean, and Terrell Total Lewis sense. is a guy. I mean, he's six foot five. He's 250 pounds. He can scratch his knees standing up. He's got such long arms. But you look at the foot quickness and the ability to go inside right now. And then watch this. He does a great job. He's not the biggest guy, but he's really learned how to speed to power really quickly. He's a guy that has to be a huge impact player against LSU. He has the ability to continue to do this and dominate games. You just need to, if you're an Alabama fan, you need to see it for four quarters. He's got to be a dude on that side of the football if they're going to stop Joe Burrow and company. Oh, I like how his explanation is a dude is a dude. Dude, by the, rank, uh, by the way, is 15th on Mel Kuyper's big board. David, game day, Tuscaloosa, 9 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN. David. Gambling talk here. We go by the numbers. How about this? Ohio State, 43 and a half point favorite over Maryland. That's according to Caesars Sportsbook. If that line holds, the Terps would be the largest Big Ten underdog in any game since the FBS-FCS split in 1978. How about the number 63 and a half? That's the over-under for LSU and Alabama, according to Caesars. The under is 9-1 and one in the last 10 meetings between these two SEC powers. All right. Ole Miss is an SEC team in action today. However, however, our focus remains on LSU and Alabama. We'll get to Ole Miss, New Mexico. We'll get to all that a little bit later. But you look at the assembled masses hours ahead of the show, which is game day, coming up 9 a.m. Eastern here on ESPN, and even further ahead of the game itself. And good morning now to College Game Day's Chris the Bear Felica, co-host of the Stanford Steve and the Bear podcast. Bear, who's your best value today? Uh, I think it's Alabama down to some only minus six now against LSU. Uh, you're looking at a team that's, what, won 31 in a row here, won eight straight in this series. Yes, LSU has that new look offense, and it's been fantastic. But still, this is a team that has scored 26 points in the last four meetings against Alabama. Until they do it against the Tide, uh, I, I, I need to see it to believe it. I think Alabama's defense is much more better equipped to stop the LSU offense than the other way around in the LSU off defense stopping the Alabama offense. So I think Alabama minus six. There's a lot of value today. All right. Best underdog bear. It's Minnesota against Penn State. Everyone wants to focus on the, the negative with Minnesota. They haven't beaten anybody. They trailed in all those non-conference games. They faced all these backup quarterbacks. But they've got a really good group of wide receivers, a really good group of running backs, a huge offensive line. And this is a Penn State team that's been outgained by four of the seven FBS opponents they faced this year. Both teams have blowout wins against Maryland. Both teams have blowout wins against Purdue. Uh, P.J. Fleck gets his team to play well as a dog. I like the Gophers today. Penn State has a way of taking the foot off the gas too late in games. All right, what about a game to stay away from, Bear? 
I, I don't know why you would want, other than just like sick entertainment value of seeing Purdue and Northwestern, why would you want to bet on a team that hasn't scored an offensive touchdown in each of the last 44 drives? And, and I don't even know what number quarterback Purdue is on right now. Is it three? Is it four? I give the Boilermakers credit. It's Illinois. Illinois is a very trendy underdog today, and, and for good reason. Michigan State is a team that struggled mightily uh, against Ohio State, Penn State, and Wisconsin. Two touchdowns and 38 drives. They're down an offensive lineman. They're down their best wide receiver. They're down their best linebacker. But, but I, I think we might be overvaluing Illinois just a little bit here. I'd be surprised if we didn't see Mark D'Antonio's team put forth a much better effort today at home in East Lansing against Illinois. Spartans are looking for their first win since beating Indiana back on September 28th. Chris the Bear Felica coming up on College Game Day, 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. I don't want to call it a streak, but when you win three straight weeks, the crown remains with the rightful owner. Bend the knee. Minnesota has to play a legit defense today in Penn State. Mm -hmm. The Golden Gophers have averaged 38.4 points per game this season. They will not hit that today. Okay, I'm back to 500. Huge for me. You're going to push that to a it's winning true. record. I'm going with LSU. My prop is this. They've scored 10 points in the last yep. three years combined against Baylor. They're going to get that in a half today. That's the prop that I'm going with. I also like the under in the game, and I also like LSU to cover the six and a half. So I disagree with Bear. So we're going to see, and maybe I'll remind Bear of the six and a half. Do you have value. a prop, and then a, just in case I lose, here's my backup no, bet, I have and then a prop, wait, here's another I backup bet, because I really want the crown. I have, I have value for the people. I have value for the people. Still have.